Does God give us strength to face the challenges that come up in life like the present circumstances we're in? In other words, does God equip us to handle the challenges we face? I mean, let's just be honest. As you go through daily life on this earth, do you have difficulties? And the answer is you do. As you go through life, you, you may have financial difficulties. You may have health difficulties. You may have interpersonal difficulties. You know, there can be famine and, and war and plague and just all kinds of things because we are on a sin-cursed earth, so you can face all of those challenges. Does, the, does God give you strength to deal with that, or does he not? Look with me, if you would, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4 has a verse that is widely, widely quoted, but largely, largely misused. Philippians 4 verse 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And the way that that verse is normally used today is, let's say you're a professional athlete. What you do is you say, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Through Christ, I can score more points. I can make more tackles. Our team can win and we can beat this other team. And people grab that verse and they use it for their worldly achievements. I can accomplish all these things that I want to accomplish through Christ because he'll give me the strength to do it. My encouragement to you is that that's not what that verse is really saying at all. Look with me at Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. In other words, just go up two verses. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Just pause there and think about that. Paul learned to be content, irrespective of, of whatever state he was in. Think about that. Paul spent a lot of time in prison, and he didn't spend his time in prison because he was committing crimes that he deserved to go there. He was wrongly imprisoned. And Paul, he, was, he received 39 stripes multiple times, and he was stoned, and Paul was betrayed by false brethren, and he was shipwrecked. And as you go through the story of Paul's life, there's some fascinating details in 2 Corinthians 11, but he just encountered problem after problem after problem. And what he said in verse 11 is that he learned in whatsoever state he found himself to be content. In other words, his, his contentment, his joy, his peace, wasn't based upon external circumstances, because frequently the external circumstances around him were always adverse. He faced opposition all the time. He faced persecution. He dealt with hunger. But he learned to be content in the midst of all of that. Look at verse 12. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Paul learned to be content even when he didn't have the material blessings he wanted, even when he was so poor that he was abased. He learned how to be abased. He learned how to abound, and it didn't change his joy in Christ. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. He was able to handle both extremes. So then now look at verse 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. That didn't mean Paul could run faster than anyone he was racing. It didn't mean he could win a boxing match. What it meant was Paul was strengthened by Jesus Christ in his inner man so that as he faced the troubles of life, the challenges of life, he was able to navigate them with contentment in the midst of all these troubles. Does that verse apply to us today? Yes, it does. So as we think about our present circumstances, friends, we, we, we do face adversity, and, and, and who knows what all of it will be. There, there'll be health adversity that many saints face, and there'll be economic adversity that many saints faith, face. And there's just, frankly, troubles around this earth. But Christ strengthens us in our inner man so that we can deal with them. 
could I encourage you to do this? When you have doubts, when you have fear, get into God's Word and read what it says about you. Read about who you are in Christ, what, what God the Father has done for you through His Son. And if you keep your attention focused on things above, if you set your affection on things above, the troubles of this life will not bother you as much. This world is not your eternal destiny. This world is not your home. We are meant, brethren, for better things.